Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. It's me, Moshe. And hi, I'm Natasha. Natasha, how are you? I'm fine. Listen, we're running a little bit late tonight. Our guest has been in the waiting room waiting to talk to us because, well, just because it's hard to have a kid. You know, it's hard to make deadlines when you have a kid, right? Yeah. She was like, brought me back into the room and I was trying to like do my hair and she was like wanting to go through the thickness of all the different pillows in her room. And did you find a pillow that was appropriately thick? Yeah, but I indulged her for like five minutes and then it was like nine o'clock. And <sighs> Anyway, folks, do not have children. I guess that is the message. That we no, I'm just saying, with. let's talk to our friend. She's sitting here waiting. Okay, let's do it. Coming to our podcast for the very first time. One of my favorite comedians. Just so dang funny. Uh, you've seen her on Upload on Amazon. Uh, you've seen her on uh, all kinds of television programs. So let's just sit, bring her in. Let's do this. Zainab Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Hi. Wh- we wanted to have you over at our house, but it didn't work out. <laughs> oh, no worries. No worries at all. I'm so happy to not have to drive. I'm so happy that you didn't come over because if you had come over, we would have missed this <laughs> ode to Zainab wall behind you. The, I mean, look, we have a picture of us up here, but we have to because we're it's a logo. But this is this is what you look at. This is, this is what gets you in the zone every day. This is new. I decided to do like a picture wall of anytime I was on stage or anytime like a fan drew like art of me or something like that. And you guys are the first to see it. And I I do want to know, honest opinion, do I seem like a narcissist? You, (laughs) I mean, you, I I just can't get over like, you look pretty good. So, you know, it's like, it's kind of, I like all the hot pictures, I guess. I'm not going to say you don't look like a narcissist, but I can put it in, (laughs) I can put it in context for you. Um, At least you don't look, like a crazy person because if you came to my house i have the same wall <laughs> the same one same pictures everything so so no, it, Zainab, it almost looks like you let us into a little private zone yeah 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 <laughs> like this is kind of like what you look at like you know before that really important zoom That's or right. before that really important show you go you 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 <laughs> you you me <laughs> Um, how you been? But How's everything? Hold on, just by oh, the look. way, though, it's sometimes it's hard to believe that you are that person, right? Like, you know, you see the picture and you're like, yes. Is that kind of part of it? Um, no, <laughs> I, I don't know. No, She's like, but- I, I'm that person. I'm that person. And that. So, yeah, you yeah, you look like a narcissist. No, but I'm not even I, I don't think I'm as confident as this wall is making it appear to be but i do have these are very pleasant memories for me so when i look at each one i'm like yeah i guess it is natasha i I guess i I do feel like i accomplished something that day yeah i mean what's your favorite one i mean (laughs) i could tell you okay so it's not finished yet right it's not finished yet because the thought is I'll continue to do st- every day. I'm getting pictures of myself on stage, right? Every day fans are drawing pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what's my favorite? I think these two. Can oh yeah. See? A cool confidence. I like this yeah. one here. I like this one here. Oh, I'm pointing. I don't, I can't, I don't I understand how the morning. internet works. <laughs> I like the one where you're kind of like wind blowing in your hair. You're oh. kind of seizing the seizing the world. Yeah. It looks like you're like doing a concert. Yeah, kinda. right. Yeah, yeah. And you want to know what's crazy? That's the improv lab. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like a tiny place. <laughs> no one has ever felt that confident at the improv lab in the history of the improv lab. Look at you. When the photographer sent me the picture, I was like, at what point in my set did I do this? Like, I don't even remember this moment. So those of you that are listening from outside of the Los Angeles area, the improv, the Hollywood improv, the famous Hollywood improv has a tiny kind of ancillary room that's like, what do you think, 60 people kind of a thing? Yeah. And yeah. if you're listening and not watching the YouTube, Zainab's vibe is as if she is performing to a sold out Madison Square Garden. And I wouldn't even say comedy. This is more like you started a rock band and you are the you are the front woman and you truly you look like a, a rock star. Wait, I have another question about the wall. OK. Did you like printing out pictures is not that easy? No, it's not. But but. Um, in a pandemic with the internet, it is. I mean, it is a task that will fill the day. <laughs> that is, <laughs> Zainab. That is, 
that is nothing if not a pandemic arts and crafts project. I mean that that definitely says I've been inside for three years. <laughs> Some, somebody was like, you know what? It's a good talking point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have a question for you before we get yeah. started. You know the format of our show. We give we give unsolicited, well, solicited relationship advice to people. Okay, are you great. are you in a relationship? I just got out of. Well, I don't. I, I just stopped seeing someone, but not just. That was October. That's not just right. What? No, that's that's no. So you're single. I'm single. Yeah. Are you? Are you out there? This was what my question was. Because I thought. Are you, were... you interested in my husband? Yeah. <laughs> and would you like to see the wall that I have of you at my house? It's really something special. No, like what I, I'm just always curious what it's like out in the the streets during COVID. Like what is going on? Are you on apps? How do you find dates? Do you find dates or do you just stare at your wall? What's your deal? I'm not on the apps. Um, because I am of the old fashioned, but I just like for a guy to like approach me. Like you gotta, that's like first step for you to ever get anywhere with me. You gotta be able to at least conquer the fear of like coming up to me. I don't care how you come up to me, but you gotta come up to so me. So you don't get, I don't want to go ahead. I don't want to give you a bunch of answers via an app. And then you're like, we have those things in common. You know how I many guys lie all the time in person. I don't want to make it easier. Right, but don't you feel bothered when a stranger approaches you and just starts hitting on you? No, not if he's cute. No, not at all. So so then where do you <laughs> go? Because we always have this discussion where I'm always like, people need to go to places that, you know, if it's like music you like or uh, uh, music you like, art you like, like a place where people congregate and Moshe's like 100% of people are meeting people online. So like, I don't know. I feel like when I was single, you could like, There'd be a band playing at the farmer's market or your friends knew someone who everyone was going to this club and like you would go to places. Natasha used to get a lot of men at farmer's markets, <laughs> local area farmer's markets. No, market. but I mean like antique, uh, anything that I liked Philip Glass. I would like find out where any Philip Glass things were playing. Like I just wanted to like meet like sophisticated people or people who, who knew what a certain thing was or I don't know. Natasha, the moment you said a band at a farmer's market, I felt way less... <laughs> self-conscious about my wall <laughs> but i mean like this week in white people shit no, it's <laughs> but, but you know it's just like no, going feel... out in public you know yeah, yeah. like yeah. like what's the thing where it's like i can pretend like i'm shopping but maybe i could meet someone you know it's like where can you go alone where you could like there might be people i don't know i i just would was always trying to think of places yeah, when the, i was single what's the craziest place you've ever been approached by a man um hmm don't you like questions like that where you really have to come up with something in a in, in a hurry so, okay so i you know i grew up in new york so men approach you everywhere they don't care they'll they'll approach you in your elevator on the street on a train like in school i mean they'll they'll, they'll walk you into your school your middle <laughs> your your middle school <laughs> it's trying to get your number so <laughs> so every everywhere the the last guy that i was seeing he was in the audience when i was performing which I never do. Whoa, that's rare. That's I, true. We have such an, a leg up being performers because you can yeah. always meet people after your show. That's funny. I used to have this like little like notable quotable about the difference between men and women is that I've never met a male comedian that has never that has not slept with a fan. And I've never met a female comedian who has you until have tonight. tonight. This was a, a watershed moment. You know what's interesting? So I know so many female comedians who who love like sleeping with fans and I was completely against it. And it's crazy because I don't even look at him as a fan. But, yeah, I guess he was a fan, but he knew the host. And so I don't think that if he didn't know the host, I don't think that there would have. A, it was like the host was like the OK. It was it was kind of like the friend connector, you know. But if he was just like somebody who came up to me after the show, as cute as he was. And it was just like, hey, I just love your comedy. You want to go out? I would probably be like, no. Well, this is kind of cool for the listeners out there. Like, there's hope. If you paint a portrait of Zainab uh, and just there's a very strong possibility that you at least get on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about the painters, though, that they're they're right on the borderline. <laughs> <laughs> right between like the sweetest fan you've ever met and also a little bit terrifying. If if they can paint you well, then it might be a match because 
if they paint you well, then that means that they see you the way you see yourself. Yeah, I like that. I just there was just a guy on Instagram that that drew a picture of me in Hungary, and I thought, what a what an odd image of a man in Hungary with charcoals looking at a picture of me that he found online, drawing my face. I just thought that was so such an odd. Image. Oh, I, I thought you. He was in Hungary. I thought you meant he drew you and put you in Hungary. I, that was strange. I mean, <laughs> he sent it to Hungary. <laughs> <laughs> no, like like he sent you. Like no, no, he doesn't belong in L.A. He belongs in Hungary. <laughs> oh yeah, that's very funny. Yeah, I, I am Hungarian actually. Are you? Are yeah. You? Are you just finding out? <laughs> I thought you were a Polak. I'm Polish, Hungarian, and a bunch of other bullshit. Um, okay, wow. well, Z- Zainab, uh, you just just passed at the comedy store. Uh, yes. h- how you find and performing there? I'm liking it. It's a learning curve. Yeah. Would you want me to elaborate? You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> What's the learning curve all of? I mean, you're so fucking funny. I don't really believe you that it's a learning curve. You're, you're no. you are so good on stage. You're one of my Thank favorites. Thank you. Thank you. I, but it is a learning curve because there's just a certain like, you know, when you go to different places, there's just like a certain rhythm. Like a couple of months ago, I did a club in Memphis and I didn't I was like, oh, I should probably go be a teacher again. Like that's how, <laughs> you know, and and then it, it took me I was there from Friday to Sunday. It took me Sunday to find my rhythm within their rhythm, you know. You're so lucky that you got that by Sunday. There's nothing worse than a weekend <laughs> where all like five out of five shows is is a bomb. It's the worst. I there yeah. was at this club in Canada. I don't remember what club it was called, but it was there was no excuse. Every show was sold out. The the acoustics of the club was perfect. It was tiny. It was like it just looked like the kind of place where you would just destroy every show. Just but exactly what you said at the end of the week you're like i have made grave errors in my career choice what mm-hmm. am i doing natasha you ever had one of those i haven't you guys but it does <laughs> sound really intense <laughs> you kill everywhere <laughs> no no of course. i had to describe to her when we first started dating what i meant by bombing she was like well what do you explain i don't understand <laughs> No, the well, the OR in particular is very challenging, and you really have to like find a way to connect with them somehow. It's like not yeah. even about what you say. So yeah, you're right. The comedy store definitely has its own it, vibe. It does. Yeah. I, I, I find myself there's like a difference in the way that I'll the OR. By the way, is the original room at the comedy store in Los Angeles, and I'll, I find myself having, you know, I only have so much material. But I have a different adjustment on what I lean into and what I tell if I'm doing a, like an alternative show on mm-hmm. the east side of L.A. or if I'm going to the comedy store because it's just what you're talking about. I mean, I'm sure Memphis is just another version of this. It's like they don't – you know, I'm only the comedian I am. I'm never going to be like some like libertarian wet dream for like the, you know, the free speech advocate at, at yeah. the, com- the comedy store. But I, I just like will tweak who I am just ever so slightly. I mean, com. I, I think crowd work is a big part of of how how I get into whichever whichever crowd I'm in front of. But yeah, the OR can have that kind of energy. Yeah, I actually really like the OR. The the place that I have like the I don't want to say the hardest time is the main room. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's when I, that's that's the only time where I feel like a little bit insecure. Maybe after I said the OR, I really like because at least you get to see everybody. So even as it's happening, like you can see why they're responding the way they're, you know, like, I don't know, but I don't know. They're so close to you though. I I like being close. No, I know. But like with COVID, they're like right on top of you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, they are. Well, there's nothing like being in the main room and, you're not doing well, and then Laurel and Hardy comes up. The light <laughs> in the light to the get off stage light is literally Laurel and Hardy. It's like a neon sculpture made in 1972, and it's like <laughs> Laurel and Hardy saying, "Like, yeah, kid, you don't got it. It's time to move on." <laughs> well, mo- okay. speaking of time no, to move on, well, I think we should take some calls because we have two calls that are waiting. Let's do it. Uh, and I don't even know if Zainab can do both of the calls. Well, let's find out. Are Zainab, you down can you to stick do a around? Call? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do okay. it. All right. Our first caller we are going to call is Dave in Philadelphia. Mm. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? I just can feel it. It's going to be bad? Let's find out. <laughs> Here he is. Oh, he looks sweet, but that doesn't look like him, does it? Dave looks petite. 
<laughs> I've always wanted to be petite. Uh, you're petite to us, Dave. How's it going? I'm, I'm, I'm great. I guess I'm, I'm petite. Wait. Oh, that really was you. It looked like a Bill yeah. Hicks headshot from the 70s. Oh, headshot from the 70s. I like that. My, I was in the background for Goldfinger. Were you really? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It was the golden scoop finger. (laughs) Well, listen, it's me, Natasha, Moshe, and our friend Zainab Johnson. Right. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Your your energy is beyond positive. Honestly, that you just, you are a font of just good vibes right now. Font. Oh, I like that. You like everything, Dave. That's what a I like about you. Font. Yeah. I guess I'm excited. I've always. I think I've always wanted to be here. Well, welcome. So, how can we help you, Dave? Yeah, I've, I've, I've got something I can't really figure out. I'm hoping you guys can help me. Queer women are the only women I can get to date me. Um, from almost the first woman I was with all the way to the woman I'm seeing now. Um have all been queer in some aspect of their identity. And I don't know, am I, am I doing something wrong? Uh, do I need to butch it up? Um, Would, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm inter- interested. Are I'm, they leaving you for a woman? Is that what keeps happening? I mean, that happens, yeah. I mean, of course, and that's kind of natural. I mean, I'm also young, so I guess I don't always expect all everything to be, you know, you know, forever or anything, but you know, that comes up. Um, and maybe that's something, you know, they, I guess, keeps you from having, you know, full enjoyment in the moment and, and being engaged. Cause you're like, uh, cause you think they're going to leave or you think they're thinking about a woman? No, I don't think, you know, I think it's, um, I don't, I don't think it comes from so much of like an insecurity. It's just like, um, maybe you're wanting to stay so open and give somebody so much space that, you know, um, you know, you're not fully engaging or something, you know? Sure, sure. They, okay, I have some questions. Why do you, why does it matter? I mean, if they're women and they're dating you, what does it matter that they're queer? What would you, what do you care? Um, I don't know. I guess it's just something, I don't know. I think it's something my friends poke at. Um, you want like a basic mall rat that you found in the like sort of <laughs> suburbs of Philly or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Maybe my my roommate told me I had a music taste that sounded like I got a kiss behind a dumpster. My first one, so maybe that's what I've always been looking for, and I can't find it in the right place. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. But I don't, I, Zainab. What do you think? Here? You jump, jump in at your at, if you got a thought. <laughs> I mean, I think you should just be happy that they're dating you. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 that's not like that's not meant to be like an insult, but they're. They're clearly like fluid or bi, right? And so, if you don't have any problem with that, then I don't, I don't, I don't see the issue. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 and I, that's how I always feel. I guess it's like you know, I mean, it maybe is wondering why my friends always kind of make it a joke. So it stays in your head. So you you're know? getting. I guess it's hard to diffuse. You're feeling insecure about the fact that the only women that tend to approach you are <laughs> women that are have a sort of a, a more queer and diverse sexual background is that what you're saying yeah yeah i mean well if they're approaching you they're definitely queer <laughs> <laughs> i just don't i'm with zainab i don't understand like what who cares i would re- first of all and also does your roommate have a girlfriend probably not exactly uh, i guess maybe not right now yeah I mean, it sounds like he went to that dumpster and there was no one there to kiss him. That's that's what I'm, I'm, I just don't. I got see to the th- dumpster first. Yeah, I don't see the issue here. First, first issue, order of business, period, is you can't be worried what other people think about your partners. You know, like that's yeah. kind of like one oh one. Although I will say, at one point in my dating life, I was dating someone that was so she was good looking, but she was so basic looking. Like she really did look, Dave, she looked like what it sounds like you're interested in. She was just, she looked literally like she'd been plucked out of a Midwestern mall. And I remember feeling like self-conscious because I was such an insufferable hipster. Uh, So I I get what you're saying. Like, it doesn't sound like it's coming from a place of like a queer phobia or anything. It's more. Absolutely not. No, you're, 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 I'm trying to save you here, Dave, because this is an odd question. Uh, (laughs) It's it's coming from a place of of just like be being unsure what it is about you that 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 
it's only this one demographic of people that tend to be attracted to you. Is that kind of the yeah, vibe? yeah? It's like it, yeah. You know what though? I, I I've often asked people this question: like, do you like to be the type or the exception? And I personally like to be the exception. It's like some diabolical way. It makes me feel special. And so maybe you're the exception for each of those queer women, and that makes you special. Oh wow! Wow, that that's straight to the ego. No, but that, I love that. <laughs> it's that's... almost like I could get like a like a wall of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen, Dave. Uh... <laughs> Maybe behind my dumpster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think Zainab, I, I love, Tosh, any thoughts there? No, I think that's that's really good. That's really good. I love that. Like, for Zainab is dropping all of the knowledge. One thing is be grateful for people being attracted to you at all. There are so many lonely people in the world that can't get a partner at all, sure. whether or not they are one thing or another. And second of all, like, how how fucking cool what a quality problem you're like oh here's the bad news unfortunately i'm so attractive to women that only usually are attracted to other women that they will skip over the 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 fence and jump into the male zone i think you're killing it right now most do do you think or tosh do you think it's because i'm petite (laughs) <laughs> well, Zainab's <laughs> the one that said you were petite. <laughs> oh, is Zainab, do you think it's because I'm petite? I, I mean, I don't know, but are you petite? Are you like, what's your, what are your measure, measurements? Let's figure this um, out. You know, I'd say 5'8", but probably my resume would say 5'9". Oh, so um, sh- yes. <laughs> it is because you're petite. I'm just realizing it right now in real time. <laughs> You're like a perfect starter kit for somebody that isn't sure they feel comfortable dating in the male zone. How about I'm a data guy that I could fucking toss to the floor if he tries anything fresh. This is awesome. Also, I just realized if 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 you're waiting for women to come on to you, you know, that might also be a different type of woman than if you were to like hang out at a bar mm. and kind of if you really want some more basic woman. <laughs> I by the way, I've never asked a guy out. That seems like it'd be really hard. And I, I, I think it's cool when women do it. But I'm just saying it's like it's it's a different thing. Zainab, have you ever asked a guy out? You say you like them to approach you, but have you ever approached? I one time, I one time saw a guy who I thought was so attractive. And we were like looking at each other at this kind of like diner. And when I walked out, I left my um, like number on a napkin. Oh, Ooh, I would do that. Did he call? He did. And I felt really, I felt like, I forget whether, I mean, he did call, but forget that. I felt so empowered when I did that. I felt like, I felt like a, like, like the best I had ever felt when I did that. Really? That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I love that. Dave, we keep saying these women are hitting on you, but I don't think we actually established that. Is that true? Do they come to you? Do they find you or do you find them? You know, I think I, I, I kind of feel more often than not, they find me. Um, you know, or it comes from a place of like, we've known each other. There's a like a lot of trust and respect. Um, well, there's your problem, Dave. If you're treating all these women that you date with love and respect, you're going to be constantly attracting people with self-respect that want those kinds of attributes, right? Uh, so if you start, tre- yeah, start treating people uh, more disrespectfully, then don't listen to Moshe. I'm just saying, <laughs> no everything you're saying is just like you're so lucky. Basically, <laughs> your friend want, wants to fuck your girlfriend. So right. exactly, you know. exactly. It's what Natasha said. Do not listen to your friends. Yeah. Don't. Okay. I think yeah. you're good, Dave. Yeah, and, and okay. just, just try to have fun. But if if there's something that you're like not, you're you're sensing a theme, and you're like, I haven't really been as attracted to these three girls, and it's been like this, then yeah, mix it up. Maybe go out of your comfort zone. Maybe ask a girl out. Maybe try to go with a different type, or I, I don't know, you know, but. I just Just feel don't overthink it. And I feel like, okay, this isn't really a problem, Dave. That's pretty obvious that you're actually just kind of stoked about this. But (laughs) I will say that it is a mark of being a cool person that that queer people are coming to you. I think like be not to stroke your ego, but just to say it's actually kind of neat that you are somebody that, uh, let's be honest, men have our, we have our problems. So you are somebody that people can come to He's and go. He's an ally. I don't know you got to address them young. You got to address the problem you're young. Sa- safe, and safe enough for people to say, I'll dabble. So <laughs> I'll, I'll dabble in the Dave dick. Uh, okay. But but if there's some genuine fear that you have that you're not saying 
If, oh, how, are we talking about penis size? I was, in <laughs> fact, talking about penis <laughs> I'll, size. I'll, I'll, yeah, sorry, Zainab. For, forget, forget, forget the good advice. What is it? <laughs> Stay no, in the I Zoom room after. Yeah, what's your part? Yeah, what do you think, Zainab? Well, if, 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 if Dave, if you have some genuine fear that you're not really saying right now that if you get serious with a woman who is also interested in women and you're you're afraid that some how that means that she may leave you for a woman or that's extra competition if that's something that you're feeling you i mean you can say that too that's why a lot of people feel like they don't want a lot of right. quote unquote hetero people don't want to date you know queer you know people who are bisexual because they're they, they feel like it opens up the the, the floodgates for more mistrust and I hear that. And, but I think like, I think that's where I've been really lucky that in a lot of these relationships, like there's always been a lot of transparency. I feel like Dave, most of your question is like, is it possible that I'm too good of a guy? <laughs> <laughs> Should I be shitty? Most? No, Should I, I try doing, it out? I think you're doing a good job, Dave. And uh, I think that uh, we've given you all the help that we can possibly give you. So uh, go out there, thank you. continue being an ally. Continue to date whoever it is that's interested in you and uh, count your blessings, Dave. Thanks. The blessings aren't petite. No. Okay. So we're back to penis size, Zainab. Oh. <laughs> Just what are your us thoughts? now. Tell what are your now. thoughts? <laughs> what are my thoughts on your penis? Yeah. Well, you... <laughs> well I mean, I've been <laughs> yeah, thinking about it a lot. <laughs> Actually, if you were to uh, see the wall in my bedroom... It's just all portraits of your penis, like other fa fans that have painted it? it and pictures of your penis in various performance spaces. So thank you. My Dave, legs are nice too. You know, okay. so get a couple of leg shots for the for the catalog. Well, I think the reason queer people date you is because you're flirting with me incessantly, Dave. I think it's obvious. You're a member <laughs> well, of the I community. I, didn't, I thought it would be gauche to hit on Tosh, and yeah, yeah, I just yeah. met Zineb. So. <laughs> okay. All right, Dave. Good luck to you. Uh, I love you guys. Love Bye. you too. Bye. Bye. Uh, this is what we call a classic. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you. Yeah, I yeah. I like it. You can tell when it got just a little bit deep for him, though. He took the glasses off. I was like, "Oh, the glasses are coming off." This is. <laughs> we stress like, them out. <laughs> like, what it might be is a, perhaps a, a too much communication from my side. Too much honesty. <laughs> is it possible? <laughs> All right. How, how old is someone like that? He seemed. What do you think? Twenty-two. I don't think he was that young, but definitely okay. early 20s. But he I think he's going towards 25. Yeah. Okay. Definitely um, young. All right. Well, listen, we got caller number two. Um, is I, If I'm not mistaken here, Natasha. Oh, you want me to call? Or, are you ready, Zainab? To I'm, I'm ready. I hope more? it's a real problem. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. I want to help. <laughs> now we're going to call Emily in Paris. Paris. <laughs> Wait, isn't that the name of a TV It does show? feel fake. Yeah. Is every yes. call fake? Yes. <laughs> I guess we're going to call Emily in Paris, but that is literally the name of a show, right? You know Emily what? In Paris. I have a Am feeling Emily, right? Emily, look, here's the no, thing. No, you're Zainab. right. It's, this is like they, they, they tricked you guys into advertising. Well, no, it's, it's more like these people come on our podcast with these uh, very specific and uh, not always flattering problems. And I'm always like, they have like very particular voices or accents. And I'm like, they, these people are going to know who you are. So perhaps <laughs> that's Emily's game here is that she does not want us to know who, what her name is or where she is from in reality. And but so we're going to see said, her video, right? And she, then we'll yeah, so the, yeah. Hi. Are you in Paris, in fact? I am. Yeah. It does look Parisian as fuck behind you. I have to be honest. <laughs> it does. I chose these curtains just for you. Okay. And you are you really Emily? Yeah. You don't have to. So what's up? I mean, is this just like a hard time for you in the world or like, do you, are you enjoying your newfound notoriety or what? I mean, I feel pretty lucky, but I will say it's, um, it sounds awful, but it's so annoying because yeah. every person you meet, you know, this is the joke. Yes. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. imagine being named Karen right now. <laughs> okay. Or Brandon. These are not good times for a lot of people. Wait, so yeah, Emily, and my life make... doesn't feel as glamorous, but I try not to like talk about that too much, you know. I just want to make sure that you know it's uh, me, Moshe, and our friend Zainab Johnson here. Oh, awesome! Yeah, hey. Hi. What do you do in Paris? What brought you? What brought you to Paris? 
So I was, uh, well, I was living in Copenhagen for five years. Sure, of course. Yeah, yeah, us yeah too. of course. Um, <laughs> well, I, I was in, I was in like DC and New York, and then Trump came up um, as a potential presidential candidate, and I don't know, like it felt like this is the time. If I can try to get away, this would be the time. So and I you left did the it. U.S. Like, yeah, I got. You out. didn't love it, and you left it. You are the person that they're talking to, and you did it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I Thank know so you. many people who threatened it. It was an idle threat, but you did it, Emily. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody, all these Hollywood people threatened it, too. And I was like, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you're going to fucking move to Finland. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, I so did it. <laughs> how has it been? How how, do, how are you enjoying it? And how's Copenhagen versus Paris? Um, It's been good. Copenhagen is really, really cold and dark. I think that it kind of shattered like a lot of my liberal illusions, um, but it was cool. It was cool. Five years is a long time. So it feels like home in a weird way. Now That's I feel cool. a little bit you, like an alien. You moved to home. Copenhagen to escape Trump and you ended up becoming radicalized and becoming a Trumper <laughs> yourself. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. But uh, yeah, it was it was good times. It's a really nice place to visit in the summer. And uh, that's what makes it sound pretty boring. But listen, it's really beautiful. It just is kind of a little bit boring. So now you're in Paris. Okay, before yeah. we move on, I do have one question. Okay. About, I know you're <laughs> yeah. going to get to the advice part. But is it true um, about the kisses? What do you mean? In France, do they kiss, they kiss with tongue there? <laughs> <laughs> I've always heard it. Like French kissing. Is that real or is that just like something? Is that just cult- cultural? Oh, it's... It's real. Wow. Every time you meet. <laughs> Every person you meet. That's amazing. All right, Natasha. Yeah. Be the adult in the room. Oh, so I want to know, Emily, what's going on? Um, Like why we're talking or what's going on in Paris? Yeah, why'd you call? Yeah, tell us okay, more about this okay. kissing thing. Yeah. Def- oh, definitely not what's going on in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I had this funny... First of all, I love the show. I'm, Thank you. This is very surreal. You guys like help me get through COVID. It's like the familiar voices. Us so, and anyway, the, uh, Copenhagen, the European Union. <laughs> yeah. So um, I basically have been seeing this guy. I met him in the summer. He lived in Paris already. He was friends with some friends here. We started hanging out. You know, it kind of felt relationshipy, but I knew he didn't want a relationship. I just moved here. But, you know, friends were like, it's going to be a trap because this is a relationship guy. So it's going to start feeling like a relationship. But you just got to check What made them think he's a relationship guy? He had been in a relationship for eight years. Well, the beautiful part about in France, they can be in relationships quickly because no one is monogamous. They all will just (laughs) cheat on you. So there's less pressure. I don't think that's true. There's just less pressure to not be in a relationship because you're like, I can just have a bunch of mistresses and it'll be awesome. I'll make a film about it. Yeah, I mean, there is a little bit of that, Natasha, but I don't I, I don't think that that was the case here. I'm not really sure. But also, like, from the get-go, he didn't want anything serious, but, like, we hooked up, we had sex. There's, like, text the next day. He's checking in every day on text. I'm like, okay, he's been in a relationship. He's used to, like, a back-and-forth, constant communication, making plans the next time. Like, yeah, I mean, it's like he's been trained. You know? Okay, so so I, I didn't mean to cut you off. So no. So so now what? So you're okay. So what's happening? The big, re- really embarrassing thing that happened is we've been hanging out. It felt great. I we had a night about two and a half weeks ago where we went to dinner, went home together. Super great, fun. But you guys do the French I, kiss thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. That. I'm just such a fan. I've always heard about it. I'm just. <laughs> And I had French onion soup for dinner. They just call it soup there, right? Yeah. It's just Come on, this is fun. <laughs> onion soup. Let's have a great time. And my girlfriends have now told me this is like a really big faux pas. You should never order this because I got really gassy. Okay. Mm. So I'm sitting there in the middle of the night, like tossing and turning, really painful. Looking back, there's a million of other things I should have done. But I woke myself up with a huge huge fart. Okay. Mm. I'm pretty sure it woke him up. I was like, Oh God, it was so awful. And I, 
when you I just woke had up, to never was... talk to him again. <laughs> you, well, you probably, <laughs> probably you should move to another European country at this point, honestly. <laughs> it's terrible. It's like, it was like a worst nightmare. And I want to be cooler than this girl. Like I want to be the girl that's cooler than this, but absolutely not. Like this was mortifying. And when I woke up, he was like already in the shower, already getting ready for the day. So I'm like, oh my gosh, like it, <sighs> I haven't heard from him in two weeks. Oh, I was going to say, if, if he <laughs> called you after the fart, you're definitely in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not even he wants one. Yeah, you're just you're already in it. it. <laughs> there are certain markers where you know you have a conversation, they propose, they change their, uh, their status on Facebook, or if he calls you after the yeah. fart, you're in. Yeah. Well, yeah. here's the thing, like, he was at least, like, half sleeping, possibly, so, like, even if he thought he heard it, he might not have heard it, you never know, but, like, he probably did hear it, but also, he, you know, sometimes that stuff's just kind of, like, in your head, like... Like, maybe really he was kind of dreaming, also, maybe it was, like, half lucid sleep. Yeah, or he thought maybe it was, like... It would just be so crazy if that is correlated, and to make it weirder or a little bit more, I just got a text message, I, so I wrote you guys where there was radio silence, so I'm like, what is this radio silence, what should I do, do I care, I'm not really sure, and then on top of that, I get a text message from him that's a PDF document. Uh <laughs> What is it about? Of, like, of what? Gastrointestinal like, uh, treatment an, options in the it's Paris, like an Paris invitation. region. He works for a company. It's like an invitation to like a friends and family sample sale. And I'm just like, what is going on? I feel like I just crossed over into like never received a PDF via text. Um, right. I think you're focusing on the wrong thing, though. The fact that it's a PDF <laughs> doesn't matter. It, it, was, it was a marketing. Yeah. The, the PDF part, it could have been an M. Like, it, that doesn't matter. Did, did the fart stink? I must know. <laughs> Zainab, with the hard-hitting questions, absolutely. You know, she's not just a I comedian. Mean, she went to journalism definitely. school. It had to. It had to. It was terrible. It had to. Because, I mean, I wanted to get up and, like, leave when all of this kind of, like, I felt this coming on because it was... It was bad. So it had to have. It and I think have. next time, i that's what I would do. Like if I didn't have, if like my stomach hurt for whatever reason, yeah. new oh, relationship. Yeah. Well, like, the problem was the there night. was a, yeah, there was a alarm. So he fell asleep really quickly. My stomach started filling with gas and then like. Filling with I, gas? I was laying there. Let's just yeah. not ever say that again. <laughs> okay. Let's, no, it's okay. I just feel like for the next relationship, don't describe it that way. <laughs> But he had an alarm system, Natasha. What? And I was like, he has an alarm in the apartment. Oh. And I was like, shit, if I get up and I go now, like, what if I set off the alarm? Anyway, Are you, you can positive tell that I'm just... he woke up? Yeah, but next time you just be, you could just be like, excuse me, I'm sorry. I, you don't say like, oh, my stomach's filling up with gas. You're like, I have an, ev I have an event tomorrow. I got to leave. Like, I got to be yeah. up morning, I forgot like... something. Okay. Wait, yeah. are you positive? That is funny, though, to turn to somebody that's asleep. You just made love. And you're just like, pardon me. My, my, stomach, my stomach pouch is filling with gas. I have to make a hasty exit. Wait, did, are you sure he woke up? No, I'm not sure. Got it. But, so he but, he might have been doing classic fuckboy shit. By the way, I've heard about this. Zainab, I wonder if you've ever encountered this in the wild. I've heard about this this character that is a he's a fuckboy, but he is treats you while you're together. Yes. Like you're like he's in love with you, but he never actually tr is in love with you. It's the same guy that w doesn't want to get into anything serious, but when you're together, it's intimate and it feels boyfriendy. Have you ever, Zane, have any ever seen anybody like that? No, I mean, I, I know that they exist, but I've not encountered them, but it's just because it's not worth it. It's such an investment to be with me. I'm not going to do it to you very easily. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you really, you really got to put in the work for me. So it's like, fuck boys know not to waste their time. It's in, not a good return on the investment. In fact, I heard Zainab, correct me if I'm wrong, that what you'll often do when you're in the early stages of a relationship is you'll eat like copious amounts of French onion soup and just fart around them just to see if they come back. That's like a thing that you'll, that's a challenge that you set down, right? It's so funny, but I can't even, uh, there's no way I'll ever <laughs> agree to that. <laughs> There's no way. And French onion soup is like a whole bunch of cheese, right? 
That's the problem, yeah. Emily, oh my God, girl. It's what? France, though. It's Paris. What are you going to avoid cheese? Yeah. And yeah. Sometimes you're looking at, well, it's hard on these menus. Like, there's not vegetables, there's not salads. I'm in a new territory. So I learned the hard, I, I guess I've learned the hard way, but oh, it's just so embarrassing. So, so did you respond to the PDF? Yeah. No, I haven't done anything. I mean, I felt like it was like a mass mailing or something. It was It strange. could have been. Was it for pants? Because maybe he's like, that was an explosive as far as you need new pants. <laughs> Here's a place to get dark colored pants in the Paris region. <laughs> 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 I'm regretting that I ever came on this show now. No, he really is a sweetheart. You guys really are in a relationship. He's like, honey, do you need some new pants? Okay. Well, listen, it's not because of the okay. fart. You're basically calling, asking, what do you do when a guy doesn't like you back? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, I'm just saying it's hard. It sucks. It's like yeah. there's nothing you can do. You know, you can like overthink it. You can think about what you're going to text him back. But it's like. If it, if it were me, I would just ignore him. And then, okay, so the, the other thing about this, which just is a little selfish, is we have mutual friends in common, and we met at the beach, and there's going to be another vacation that I kind of want to be a part of. So I think I need to just ghost him, but maybe play it cool, because I want to go back to the, I mean, who gets to hang out on the Italian beach, you know? I guess you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Copenhagen, Paris, and now the Italian but beach. Is, yeah, but or maybe just avoid it. I mean, so I do you're, have you're, feelings. You're, you're, you're like feeling so embarrassed because he dissed you. Really, the fart is a oh, fun yeah. area for us to have um, shit jokes at your expense. But but the really embarrassing part is that you were starting to kind of catch feelings for this guy, and oh, he yeah. kind of just disappeared. Zane, have you yeah. have any thoughts? I say say it. I don't think that I'm. I am not of the opinion where we should like ghost people or like. You know, I, I don't know how old you are, but I just feel like the more mature thing it, and, and the thing that like releases it for you is just say say it. Even if you have to say it in a text, you know, say tell him exactly how you feel. And if he doesn't feel the same way, that's fine. And then show up on that vacation looking cute as fuck and don't pay him no mind. I love but your vibe. Yeah, I, I love I love your advice because like that. It's so not what I would ever do, but it feels like it would be very liberating. <laughs> Yeah, it, it wasn't what I would do at one at some points too. But then I was just like, you you carry it, you hold on to it. You know, it's just like a lot of times we seem like we we feel like we're embarrassed, and I'm sure this is no shade, Emily, but I'm sure he's not as great as you think he is. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's never point. as great. He's never as great as the girl that likes him thinks he is. And so just like to just ask him straight out, say, hey, I was catching feelings for you. Don't bring up the fart. I was catching feelings for you. And I just want to know if you feel this way back. If not, it's all good. You know, I'll see you on the beach. Yep. I'm, I'm with it. that. because I like it. I like it too. And this but is... you just have to be prepared for him to be like, oh, 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 yes. oh, 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 you have to be okay with receiving nothing from, but the nothing is the biggest thing. If he don't even respect you enough to respond, there's no bigger diss than that. And the, there's your answer. I mean, that's what I was, yeah. uh, w when I brought up that kind of guy that treats you like he's your boyfriend and then stops texting you altogether, I, I meant it's a manipulation and it's it's an exactly. unfair manipulation and in fact it's actually more my opinion it has there's more integrity in a man who says i'm not interested in anything serious and treats you as though he's not interested in anything serious than somebody that's like i'm not i don't know what i'm into but treats you in this way that's almost like a mind fuck it's like i'm going to treat yeah. you as though i'm falling for you because i get some sort of power out of the the experience of a woman you know looking at me with greater and greater affection and then I'm going to bone out. To me, it's more respectful to say I'm a one night stand kind of guy and you'll never hear from me mm -hmm. again than to be like all in your in, in your emotional mix. It's like emotional kind of gaslighting. And I'm sure because you're in Paris, all of the street lamps are lit with gas. And so I know it might be romantic, but I brought it up specifically because I think it's a it's a bad trait. What else? I what, The other thing I like about what Zainab said is that you're saving you're like not wasting your time like my yeah. advice would be to be like oh give him the cold shoulder 
And then it's like, oh, then you're like still ruminating about it. And he's like taking up so much of your life. Whereas like if you do what she said, it's you can at least move on. Here's the because he's going to be like, oh, well, that is a, ooh, I don't know, uh, whatever he says. I mean, maybe he'll be like, oh, really? I never thought of you that way. But let me think about it. Yeah, but he didn't think, think you guys had yeah. sex. So, you know, it's I, I'm just saying at least then you get your answer and you can move on. And it's not just this space that you're like having like annoying thoughts about for six months. I mean, here's the other crazy part of your particular situation is that the only problem with Zainab's advice is that it's it requires courage because you yeah. are feeling like I'm going to get embarrassed. Uh, he's going to diss me. You already I'm, farted. so it's And like... you already <laughs> farted. That's what I was going to say. You're already, I mean, they could not get more embarrassing. So you're already in a zone of such power because you literally have nothing to lose. You already lost your lunch. And the biggest misconception is that you can confess your love or interest in someone and them reject you. And that's so embarrassing. That is not, that is the human experience. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, that th th it just is what it is. It's only embarrassing if you allow it to be embarrassing. But if you, who cares? G guys get rejected every single day. It's a sport for them. You know, like, who cares? Mm -hmm. Who cares? I always, when I was dating, was, uh, I was in your camp, Zainab. I just felt like the only answer was ever to be completely, like, forthright and be like, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. I don't appreciate that. I appreciate this. And because it's like you're going to get getting your information. Just what you said, Natasha, you get your information so much quicker that way. And you don't have to spend your time reading tea leaves. Like, does did I get the PDF because he wants me to? <laughs> was it a spam? Was it a mistake? Does it was it a diss? Did he do it as an insult? Does he want me? It's like, fuck all that. Hey, are you interested in me? Because I was interested in you. Yes. Great. Bye. Also, I love the idea of men just like they're asking people out all the time. Like I used yeah. to have this agent and like every time we'd be out to eat, he would like be asking a waitress out. He'd be asking some stranger out. It was just like, like you said, Zainab, it was like sport for him. Like he would ask mm -hmm. three girls out and like one, you know, it was so tacky, but he thought it was funny. But like, yeah, we should have. I, I do feel like it'd be cool if women could encompass a little more of that. But, but not you, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I can now, but like, I feel embarrassed that I was so square and like, you know, cishet. And and I'm not, I'm like, you know, I said at the beginning, I don't ask guys out, but I definitely am not afraid to like address a situation that I'm in. Like you're in a situation with a guy and you want a little bit of clarity. You can seek that clarity for yourself. And if there, if he says no or nothing, that is still still very clear. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like it. It seems like kind of inspired too. Like it seems like I'm in France. That's what I should do. That's what yeah. they do. The Europeans yeah. like confess it, be in it. Yeah. Be a little dramatic. I feel like smoke lose a cigarette while you do it. I do feel like it's very French. A French woman would say, like, what I, I'm interested, where did you go? You don't call, I fart, you don't call. What the fuck? <laughs> and just get your fucking answer. Hello, yes or no, I'm out. I don't care. I fuck other guy. <laughs> All right, Emily. Good luck. I like good it. Luck, Thank honey. you so much, guys. Good Thank luck. You. All right. Bye. Bye. Zainab, you have wisdom. I love that. You uh, you have such a specific kind of wisdom, too. It's so sharp. I'm, uh, I'm, I feel like motion I should come to you for couples therapy. I know. I'm like, <laughs> you want to take over hosting this show? No, um, it's, it's, it's always easier on the outside, you know? Right? Um, Zainab, if you have some time, we have one more section of our podcast, which Let's is that we, we play um, our listeners call in and they leave their deep, dark secrets on our secrets hotline. And okay. we just we could hear like two or three of them and just riff on them or make fun of them you or can say what's wrong with them. Yeah, whatever you want. Let's play one. We didn't ask her what time it was in Paris. What is she I mean, doing she, up? She stayed up late. <laughs> I like it. I mean, what a what an adventure she's on too. But that guy is like gonna reject her. Yeah, he is. But you're right, yeah. Zainab. It's better to get the rejection to be like, oh, okay, I'm right. not crazy. Yeah, because she's she's right now she's in limbo. Like she it's 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 two and a half weeks later. She called you guys about you know like she's just in this place waiting on him to make a decision that he's already made. So call him out for it. Yep. And yep. then move on. So so Zainab, just do you think that? In in a perfect world, this guy would have maybe told her that they should just be friends or like, what do you think? Like, is he do you think he's doing a, like 
he's playing it wrong by like not calling her back or what do you think is the right thing for a man to do? I think there was a little bit missing from the story, honestly, because she said that they have been seeing each other since the summer. And so it's not like they got together and then he goes to her after like they've been, they've been doing it a couple of times. So I just, I just think there's something in his life, like something in his life we don't know. But whatever it is, it's not enough for him to be interested in her. And that's what's important. That That's what matters in her life. Well, I really... I'm just wondering what can a man do if he wants to be really respectful, but he wants oh, to yes. just fuck women and these, these, they're not like I, I, into them. Well, that's what do you what I do? Said. That's what I said. I mean, just look, say it. Be honest. Yep. Be, be honest. There's a lot of women out here that just want to fuck too. Be honest. You know, and I think that that like, like don't take our choice away. If you want to just fuck, then you have to fuck women who also just want to fuck. And that's yep. fine. And, you know? and, I w- and I meant it. Like, I just think that treating women who you've told outright, I'm not interested in anything serious, like you're in a serious relationship with them is a, is gaslighting. And it's, it it's, is. It's, I, I, it's, it's fucked up. All right. All right. Yeah. Let's let's do a secret. Hey, guys. Love your show. Love you. My secret is I've been a hairstylist for 10 years and I can't cut a straight line to save my fucking life. Um, take that however you want. I try my best. I specialize in color and I am good at that. Um, but for some reason, I just can't cut hair and I still do. So sorry to those people. Thank you, guys. Her uh, secret is that people pay her to cut their hair and she doesn't can't know do. how to do it. <laughs> Well, one of the tricks I learned from the pandemic, because I would get haircuts on Zoom and the person would tell me how to do it, is like, it's like a lot of like little like triangle corner cuts. So maybe like she does that. Natasha, you can't give her advice. She is a (laughs) hairstylist. She works in a salon. You don't have to cut Your Zoom tips aren't going to get her where she needs to be. That is crazy. (laughs) I think that that's a crazy confession. She said she's been a hairstylist for 10 years. Dude, Jeez. I'm over here talking shit about this Parisian guy saying it's a, a form of emotional gaslighting to treat women. All of a sudden, I realize who a real monster, what a real monster sounds like. <laughs> it's this hairstylist. St- this guy's just figuring his romantic uh, situation out. This woman, she has the information that she needs. All she has to do is say, hey, I don't do hair anymore. I do color only, but she won't do it. She's like, I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> it's crazy. But I, I want to know how bad it is that she had to confess the secret. Right. Like. <laughs> Like, why? Like, are people not, are people like, I think I like my hair. I'm not sure. You know, like how? Well, there is a situation where you get a bad haircut and it, you're so intimidated by the person cutting your hair that you, I, I've been in the situation many. Every why would t- you be intimidated by the person cutting your every hair? Every time I've gotten a haircut that I didn't like, I've told the person, yeah, it looks good. And then I just like wander to my car and I stare at my haircut <laughs> and I go, I hear what, you're what saying. the fuck? So I maybe she's just running. Maybe she's gotten incredibly lucky and no one's ever come back and been like, you fucked my hair up. All right. Well, let's, let's hear another. Well, let's hear another one. One more. <laughs> Hi, you two, my favorite comedian. So my secret is that uh, I started masturbating very young. I'm thinking maybe like four or five, six. And I didn't really understand what it was. I just like was rubbing my crotch on different corners. And I also was at the same time taught about God because I was raised Christian. And so there was a lot of like, God thinks this is good and God thinks this is bad, blah, blah, blah. So at some point when I swear I was five or six and I had a neighbor girl over, we were on the front porch and I was teaching her how to rub herself on the front porch table in, in broad daylight, just like within eyesight of every small town neighbor world. Um, and so I was teaching her how to do that. And while I was doing it, my hands were on the corners of the table as I was rubbing on it. And my hand got stung by hornet. <laughs> and I ran inside and I screamed and I figured that God hated me for a long time. But now I know he doesn't. Thank you. Love you both. So much. <laughs> that as a kid, a religious kid, that is so funny. You're just like, oh, mom and dad were right. They were 100 percent right. God will send angry hornets to stop me from this activity. Zainab, uh, 
you don't have to answer this if you don't want, but you grew up religious. What what lessons did you as a young Muslim girl receive about sex and sexuality? And I I, I like was, what was given None, over right? to you? None. My mom didn't even tell me I was going to get a period. Wow. My mom and didn't I, either. Yeah. And I asked her, I asked her like later in life, I'm like, why didn't you tell me that I was going to get a period? And she was like, I, I just thought it, 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 you'd figure it out. And I oh was God. like, yeah, I did figure it out. But I also thought I was dying for a few hours. So thank you. I can't oh even God. imagine. That is so crazy. You don't have any, con- no context for it. And it just happens and you go, of course you would think you were dying. And then hornets yeah. started coming out of it as well, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 confession took a left turn. I I was not expecting the hornets at the end. No, to be honest, Zaina, when I was listening to it, I was like, we're gonna cut this out. This is a little bit creepy. And then the hornets came. I was like, I get it. I get what's yeah, happening. Yeah, full here. circle. But you know, it's common. I used to. I I went to school for teaching, and when I did my student teaching, I had to teach science to K through five, and. Uh, they tell you when when you like study education how young kids masturbate and it's not like from a sexually deviant place most times or even like a sexually intimate it's just a pleasure place they're discovering their bodies there was a little girl in one of the classes and she just masturbated every single day and And do they do you tell her to not do it what we had to do is we had to uh, call her parents and make sure that she always had on a pair of tights or pants. <laughs> really? Because when our, our daughter's three and she does it sometimes. Yeah. And I'm like, can you stop doing that? And I'm like, you need to go do that in your room. Yeah. And then my friend was like, oh, it's cute. Just let her do it. And then it's like, we'll be all watching TV. And she's like rubbing up against the couch. Yeah. And I don't yeah, know. Just- I don't want to shame her. But at the same time, I don't really want her doing that in public. She'll she'll definitely grow out of it. Uh, like I don't know any kid that was rubbing on the couch that's just like a a, a seventeen year old just like still just like. <laughs> what do you mean? That's all I did when I was seventeen. <laughs> to be honest, my experience with sex and sexuality, and masturbation specifically, is so opposite of both of you. My mom told me everything. She told me like too much. It was like constant like. Every week we had these lessons with my mom in this book called Boys and I think it's my mom oh my was God. I think my mom was like overcompensating <laughs> because she was a single mom and she was like self conscious about the fact that she had two boys and, and they were in the Bay Area so it was like very it was like, like some hippie positive. shit yeah. yeah but I think she was like also like worried that she wouldn't know how to help us become men so she w- it was like too much and so I was always reading these books about masturbation and I was thinking when I was young I was like this seems really cool I really want to try this it sounds awesome awesome but i could not figure out how to physically do i literally didn't understand because i was reading text and i was like i was i kept trying to recreate what i was reading about i just couldn't figure and then i hit puberty and i I worked things out on my own but i was like experimenting like is this what they mean is this what they mean and i never did figure it out till i hit puberty i think i'll be that parent though um that'll like I'll, i'll over talk my kids and like oh i want them to get like that type of information from me especially now like you know, when you were a kid, there was no, I don't know, I don't know, you know, I don't know how much internet you had access to, but now your kid has access to, they can physically see, you know, yep. anything that they want. And so I think that it's best that the information comes from the, you know, the parent, as yeah, awkward I, as it can be. I agree, but I just, what's crazy, Zanab, every week I was having these lessons from my mom and it was like, in one ear, out the other, because I was so embarrassed that my mom yeah. was telling me I didn't hear shit. So then we, I get to, I would still fall victim to the same like cl- playground tips. I remember when condoms first really hit because it was the AIDS yeah. crisis. It was like the eighties when I was in elementary school. All the kids were running around going like, "Yeah, I got a condom on right now," <laughs> and we were like. And I just assumed it was true. And then now I'm now I'm an adult. I'm like, oh, okay. Everyone was lying. But I was like, oh, that's how you do it. You just wear them all day long just in case. Uh, that's hilarious. Should we do well, one more? I th- oh, well, it's 10, honey. Okay, we, we can do yeah, Let's say goodnight. We can say goodnight. That was a good one to stop on. But Zainab, you had such great advice for people. And you're so damn funny. And you got a wall. Now I see why you. you deserve the wall of Zainab. I want to so let me ask you this. You have a table read. It's like, you know, some some like heavy hitters. Do you have the wall? 
Do you mean does she look at the wall before no, she starts? No, no. Does she have the oh, wall in her on back? A zoom. <laughs> That's a great. I don't question. know. I don't know. That's what I was asking you guys. You're the first to see it. You're the I'm first. into it. I it's grown on me a lot. I mean, I I liked it from the beginning, but now it's just it feels like kind of ironic, but also like fun and funny and. No, that yeah, is. I, I, I think there's definitely going to be one person that's like. Bitch, you know, <laughs> and I'll take it. I'll take it because you know what? Am I gonna put like bookshelves and like books that nobody read? You know, you know everybody's Zoom background now is like you know rich dad, poor dad. The <laughs> ego is the enemy. And I'm not gonna do that cliche cliche shit. It's just like you know, I never stand up changed my life. I'm so happy to have it. So oh, this great. is. This is a a, a gross shrine of that. (laughs) I love that. Stand up is amazing. We're so lucky. I'm so glad that I can see you at the comedy store now. Yeah. And you're so damn good at it too, Zadam. And by the way, um, to our listeners, um, if you want to get, I just had an epiphany. If you want to get on Zainab's wall of fame, all you have to do is draw or paint a portrait of her, send it to us, endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail.com. We'll forward it. And if it is good enough, you might just end up on that wall. <laughs> There's yeah. a spot. There yeah. is a spot. There's a perfect spot right there. Uh, Zainab, do you have any dates or anything you want to plug before we say goodnight? Yeah, February 14th, I am headlining the Punchline in Philadelphia. One night only is Valentine's Day, so this is a perfect place to advertise. Ah. Dave, Dave, you got to go bring all your queer <laughs> lovers out to see Zainab <laughs> at the Punchline in Philly. Wait, you're going to have so much fun. That's a great club. Amazing. Yeah. You're just doing it on Valentine's Day. Yeah. It's going to be that. so great. People are going to yeah. come. Anything I can't else? Wait. Uh, that's it for now. I mean, I have other ones, but they can go to my website, ZainabJohnson.com. Uh, they can check me out on social media. Everything is Zainab Johnson, and you'll Heck find yeah. all my information. Uh, you're the best. Thank you so much for doing Thanks it. Thanks for have... doing this. Thank Dana. you. You were so funny and so <laughs> See you fun. See at the comedy store. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye, Ann. 